Hello? Hi. Oh, that's it. Mm-hmm. That's brilliant. OK. Oh, sorry Hi. about that, dear listeners. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a lot of dead air time, wasn't it? It was. Um, but no, we've, 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 we've got around it now, I think. <laughs> that was fun. So we were chatting about marketing. Yes. And uh, social media and all that kind of thing. So you were asking me about numbers. We're doing an Instagram takeover today of X Fringe. Uh, account. So they have 400 followers. And the posts that we've put up so far have had a couple of views, maybe four, four views in total. And um, that's all we've done today. We've done three posts so far today. Um, we will put my extra trailer on there, but we'll also look at other shows that are running in the festival. So my assistant Mel is running that for me, but I'll be chatting to her through the day, see you how know, she's getting on. And then if we look at my own Instagram account, I I have about the same number of followers. I have 496 followers because we are relatively late to Instagram compared with all of our other platforms where we have typically 2,000 plus, you know, two to 3,000 followers on LinkedIn and Twitter and so on. But on Instagram where we've run the extra trailer, I think because people love videos, so much. There's been 30 views of my Exeter show trailer on my own Instagram account. So much stronger uh, reaction there on my own account. Now maybe that's because people are more invested in me, uh, and that's why they're looking. They're interested in my news and uh, my followers. Uh, I don't know. But we also put a picture of the brochure, the Exeter brochure, with me in it, with Al LaBelle uh, above me, guy that I know from America as a comedian. And that had 85 views and five comments with people saying, oh, great, uh, are you doing the Edinburgh Fringe? <laughs> so I always have to go, no, I'm not this year, I'm doing Camden Fringe. <laughs> and it does cause a bit of confusion, even in my own mind, trying to market two fringes uh, simultaneously is uh, not that easy. <laughs> I found it a little bit um, complicated this year to be into, but that's all a bit of a learning room so yeah so we'll see how that goes on instagram today that's all day doing an insta takeover and and then yeah my newsletter is really powerful but also facebook the facebook is pretty powerful these days with new getting around it a uh, lot of people follow my news on facebook um but again we've only got a few hundred followers for my page which is called celia delaney entertainment and then my personal profile celia delaney i have almost a thousand friends and that can do very well, but I'm reluctant to have lots and lots of friends there because I also want to use it for my personal life as well. So I do <laughs> yes, <want to laughs> yes, there. it is so important I, to hang on to that. <laughs> yeah, it's hard though because a lot of people that I am now connected to are of just comedians that I've met once or keynote speakers that I've met once. And I think you know, I have slightly opened the floodgates there to it, it not being close friends and family. But I suppose I could always start another profile uh, for something smaller smaller number of people but I just honestly we run so many platforms now that it's very hard to keep up with that's why I have to employ other people to do it it's just too hard you know uh, to do all these things so yeah I'm very lucky that I've got this do, do, do you have any sort of model as to as to how you track the consequences of any of it um, I'm just asking if you say okay we, we need to reach people within range of Exeter who could be an extra on Monday Mm. who might buy one of these 30 tickets and there's okay there's a thousand people on instagram but we don't do we know where they are or maybe or does it you know don't john is sort of grunting at me i'm not not grunting at me but he 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 thinks i worry too much about certain (laughs) sorts of things but i think it's not that you're worrying so much i think it's that this is a very dark art and it's very very difficult to learn to do it and there's a lot of it i don't know and that's why i employ dean to do it i have a marketing manager as well there's a company she uh, runs a company called sm to communicate which stands for social media to communicate dot co dot uk and she's excellent dawn louise claire she's really great and she will analyze the data behind the scenes at Twitter and she'll say this post is performing really well there's a lot of engagement on it so write more posts like this so she will guide the strategy for me and Mel for, uh, you know, for me to produce content 
and for Mel to go and curate content from around the web that she'll often find other interesting things to post so that we're not just talking about me all the time <laughs> of course we should be but you know <laughs> I feel like I've got to spread the love around a bit and um, so, so that's being steered by a marketing person that understands these things best than I do and it, it does change you know algorithms change um, trends change platforms change and so you have to be studying it all the time I think to keep up I just can't I can't do that and write shows and and go and speak at conferences. I have to just be doing my talent and try to let everybody else see their talent. <laughs> so sure. that's where I get around it. Sure. Yeah. But with, with regards to content, are you are you relaxed about content uh, being available on YouTube or, or other other places? Because um, yeah. I, I know there's the, there's quite a lot of clips there from your previous shows that are mm-hmm. available on YouTube. Yes, I am really relaxed about it because it helps me get books. The more that you can give away, the more that you show, it's better in my world particularly. So if someone wants to hire me as a keynote speaker, and I typically speak for 45 minutes to an hour at a conference, that client might want to watch the whole hour on video before they agree to book it. It's rare, but they might want to. And that's because they want to be absolutely sure what are you going to say, is it any good? No, I... Typically, as speakers and comedians and artists, we have show reel. You know, I have a number of show reels where we've cut clips together to show off what I do, and they are very effective for getting booked. However, a client would be quite right to be cynical about that and say, it's all very well that you've edited it down to the best bit. What about when we watch you over 20 minutes or over 45 minutes or an hour? Can you sustain a good level of performance and a good level of messaging throughout? And then, then I'll pay you to come and do it. So it's very useful to film as much as you can when you're a performer like me or a speaker and not be afraid of giving it away. I know people that have one signature keynote speech, which they make lots and lots of money out of doing, and it's all freely available on YouTube. And you would absolutely think, no way, they're not going to get booked for a conference, surely, if they've given it away. But it doesn't work like that because the delegates aren't looking at it. They won't have the time to watch a one-hour speech online they won't be bothered but when they're sitting in the conference they'll listen to it live whereas the client the booker will look at the video for an hour and they say yes we will book him or her and then there you go you've got the gig so it's actually better it's better to show what you do and not try and hide it too much give away your best stuff was one of the best pieces of advice i ever got so We'll put this show on YouTube with Creative Commons, and I'm, I just want to check that's okay with you to to make it available for remix, or if people want to take bits out of it. Yeah, absolutely, that's fine. Turn it into a rap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Okay, we might do that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody might. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that that that's great because I I I just think that. Those, those sorts of approaches have been acceptable in music so that, I mean, Radio for, for Always has been playing tracks from different musicians, so that's, that's available, or samples of new new work, uh, not sort of complete albums, that's that's not frowned upon, but there's, mm. there's always been quite a lot of freedom as far as music's concerned, what radio can do with it. But I, I don't think theatre has been as open as that um, with putting samples or versions, or maybe it's because it's it's very difficult. What ha- what happens in live performance isn't isn't easy to represent as as video clips. Yeah, that's certainly true. I mean, if you see the picture house cinemas, they will run um, viewings of, of theatre, of opera, and the National Theatre. And Fleabag is coming up, got sold out in the West End, and they I'll probably go to the cinema and watch. Uh, um, the show of Fleabag which will be watching somebody on stage in a theatre and I think it's never the same I think it goes a bit flat you know on the screen I'm willing to do it for certain things because I want to see the content but I don't think there's any replacement for the live experience it does feel very different to have someone in the room with you than it does to have someone film Um, so I can see the resistance because it can make the show not look like it's not as good as it was live um, and also it's the cost of filming it, to be honest. Like with a song, if a song has been recorded, then it's been recorded. You know, that is what they're going to do with that song, is make an album and invest the money to do that. But it's expensive to hire a videographer to come and shoot your show and then edit it. You know, it's about £1,000 
So for many communities, that's just out of reach and they don't have that kind of budget. So that's often why they're not filming more. It's is really a cost consideration. But the, the video you've done promoting your show in Exeter, that, that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything against it, but it's, it's quite casual. Well, there is something wrong with it. It's slightly out of focus, which uh, oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> pretty much did my um, token spirit at Hamilton, who is in a duo with me. We are Loris and Lee, we do a cabaret duo together, and she's got a new vlogging camera, and she was so excited about it. And she said, oh, I'll do it, I'll do your video. And then uh, I got it from her, and I was like, it's really out of focus. But I'm just going to position it that people are drunk when they watch it. <laughs> okay. Not my problem. Uh, but yeah, I think for trailers and for speaking straight camera, it really works better that it's more informal. You can do it with a phone, obviously people do. Yes. Um, whereas if you're going to show your performance, I think you really need to get broadcast cameras and sound organised. Otherwise, you're, it's not going to look good. You know, I've got a number of films of me on stage from people's iPhones or, or Android phones. Mm-hmm. And it's terrible. You know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be something I put out on the web, ideally. Um, so that can be sometimes why people ask, you know, why you're not allowed to film in theatre and comedy. It's not just for copyright reasons, but also because they know it's not going to do their reputation any good if it looks bad, you know, if it looks really bad quality. Right. So, yeah. So I think for trailers and things like that, just use your phone, just hold your phone, or stick it on a tripod and get a microphone maybe I was, again it was quite windy where we were sitting and I didn't have a microphone um, my, I've got a friend who invented Hey Mike which is a bluetooth microphone that I use with my phone to make videos if you can use a decent microphone then that helps as well yeah yeah no I think there are there are ways in between you know that, that yeah. can be can be done with different different material and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, ho- I'm hoping during, during the, the extra fringe that we'll, we'll get some some content coming off it Fairly casually, which we can yeah. maybe yeah. use on the radio or put on the onto the our streaming or whatever. Yeah. We'll see, see how all of that goes. Mm-hmm. Um, see, we got, we got. It's twenty five to twelve now, so we got, we got, we got to sort ourselves out fairly, mm-hmm. fairly soon. But you, you, you sent links to a couple of songs. So what, yeah. what, what I mean, you've, you've gathered, we we can cope only with the studio to a certain extent. So what 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 I'll do for the for this the rest of this show, if I if I, if I just ask you for the next sort of five minutes or so about the two songs and then we'll play them after that, um, so we're coping with one thing at a time sort of thing, and then we might edit it together more sensibly la- later on. Yeah. Um, so this sort of gap between the podcast and the FM signal is it's it's only timing, that's all it, all it is. Mm. Um, so the the one. One's a Vera Lynn track and one's a version of uh, Cecilia. So yeah. why, why did you choose those those two? Well, I wanted to have some house music. I'm hoping to be able to play these at the beginning and the end of the show. I haven't worked that out yet in terms of licences and uh, tech as well with the venues, but we will work that out and eventually we'll get there. Um, but I wanted to create a bit of atmosphere at the beginning of the show, particularly just before I come on. And I just stumbled across this song, If I Only Had Wings. And of course, the show is called Angelic, and it's all about whether or not I am angelic, and uh, it features a pair of angel wings on point. So I wanted to get this atmosphere of speaking about wanting to have wings. I mean, it's actually just singing about the RAS, you know, like wings, like the wings on your uniform. But I've just taken it to be about wings because these things all about flying and being free and so on and I just really love the sound of it and I wish I was there then I, that's what I would have done if I'd have existed at that time I absolutely would have been entertaining the troops that would be my perfect job to do uh, singing and looking glamorous so that's a little nod to Vera Lynn yeah at the beginning of the show great and, th- and then Cecilia you've got an updated version on, on that song yeah so my name is actually Cecilia, and in the show, I also decided to call my daughter Cecilia. And then I posed the question, which one of us is angelic? Because there's a lot of things I've discovered about the name Cecilia. I was named after the painting saint of music, the Catholic saint Cecilia, but my mum is not Catholic. And also, it means angelic, and it's actually an Anglo-French name, hence having this Anglo-French daughter. 
So I was really intrigued by this. It had lots of different elements to it. And also my parents said that they named me after the Simon and Garfunkel song, I used to see you. Right. Which is a wonderful song. I really like it. And I like that version very much. But I stumbled across this version online by the Vamp. I'd honestly have heard of them. Probably the young people will despair. And it's called Ocecenia, Breaking My Heart, featuring Sean Mendes. And it's a rap, really, on top of the more traditional rendition of Cecilia. And it adds some other lyrics. And the lyrics I found really poignant in terms of what I talk about in the show, about love and loss and rediscovering this daughter and wanting to be close to her. The opening of the rap has a lot of those lyrics in it. And I thought that would be really good to play straight after the show, just as people are filing out the door, just to leave them with a few more thoughts about what we think. Right. Okay. Well, look, we'll we'll play we'll play those in the in the next ten minutes, quarter of an hour or so. But I think we I think we've got to stop now because um, we're supposed to stop at twelve, and we've got to we've got to furl our cables up mm-hmm. and pack them away and so forth. But th- but thank you. I th- I think uh, despite the two the two uh, interruptions, we we did we did pretty well. Yeah. Brilliant. We, thank you. Good question. <laughs> Well, thank you, and we'll we'll well we'll see. We, I think we'll see you on on Monday, and maybe uh, different different bits of the festival as it as it goes on. And um, we'll try and keep. Will come to the show? I think we'll come to the show. Yeah, I think we will. Oh. Yeah, so there's only twenty eight to go now. If we if we manage to get two of them. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. plenty to go. And I th- I think if you if you're here on Monday. Um, the Make Tank, I think I've got the right name. The one of the shops in Paris Street, uh, yeah. which is empty, has been taken over as a, a sort of uh, research space or something. They, they've got some project about the arts, developing the arts, and I think Phonic FM is going to be there, um, as well as the the Extra Fringe. I think that's I think that's Monday evening, but quite early, obviously, not to, not yeah. not to coincide with your event. But oh, I'll, 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 Comedy hour of nine pm. Nine pm. Yeah. Well, I think this event's earlier than that. Yeah. We're, we're not quite sure at the moment. We'll try and find out, and we'll carry on twittering. Yeah, and I'll see if I can get down there between because I tech in the afternoon in the venue at the Barnfield Theatre, and then the studio is there, and then I'll, I'll have a bit of time off before my show, so I might be able to get down there and yeah, see what's going on. Okay, well, we'll we'll, set, we'll send you some details when we when we're a bit more informed as Great. it goes on. But m- meanwhile, th- thank thank you re- really for for talking all this time and oh, ch- give, giving us all this info. <laughs> and um, we'll ju- we'll just hope this fe- festival takes off. Okay. Yeah. Well, as long as we support it, then uh, you know they can only do their best and then build on it from here, can't they? Right. Okay. Thank th- thanks a thank lot, you. and we'll speak again soon. Bye. 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 Bye.